It is an absolute pleasure for me to welcome all of you to Deploy 2024. As Wade mentioned, this is a very special time for us at DigitalOcean. And we want to start scripting the next chapter of our journey with you, as we have always done. We want to share this journey with our customers, partners, and fellow developers as we enter what I believe to be the most transformational phase of technology. Here is a quote I love. There are decades where nothing happens, and then there are weeks where decades happen. We are now entering a phase in which decades worth of progress are happening right before our eyes. And these changes are impacting developers in ways we have never seen before. But these types of exponential changes are not new to technology. We have seen this pattern repeatedly over the last 40 years. First was the emergence of computing as an accessible technology in every home, in every desk, along with advancements like the internet that helped connect systems and organize data. This was followed over the last 20 years by the emergence of social and consumer applications, mobile, and finally the cloud, which displaced old software with a new kind of software, with new models of software development emerging, new deployment models on the cloud, and even new business models like software as a service that replaced old type of software. The total economic value of this wave was an order of magnitude larger than the one we saw previously. Now we are entering a new wave that is going to be another order of magnitude bigger than the last one for many reasons that we will explore later during this presentation. This is a phenomenal time to be a developer. Let's have a look at the forces that are shaping this new order for developers. First, there is a democratization of development happening with more developers emerging than ever before. This is lowering the bar for innovation and making it accessible to everyone. By many estimates, there are more than 100 million developers in the world today, including 25 million professional developers that do development for a living. GitHub alone added 21 million accounts in the last year, and 2023 saw the highest number of open source contributors ever underlining the vibrancy of this ecosystem. It is not far-fetched to think that the day of the single developer unicorn is not that far away. Cloud development is also getting more and more productive with the various elements of the, the computing platform that powers the cloud, enhancing productivity for both development as well as operations than ever before. Finally, AI. AI is going to have an impact on software development in many, many profound ways, starting with making developers more productive through the use of technologies like Copilot. As Jensen famously said recently, English is going to be the most popular programming language. Next, we are also starting to see a wave of applications that will start incorporating AI into their fabric using technologies like chatbot, recommendations, and so forth. We will also see many applications like customer relationship management or any other business application, which will all be rewritten as AI-centric applications in the next few years. Finally, over the next several years, we will start seeing a new wave of software applications that are not just replacing old software, but are replacing human services, like professions, that are going to be augmented, even replaced by AI agents. As you can see, this is going to create a tremendous amount of value for the whole software development ecosystem. The key here is adaptability and how we as a community can help each other get there. As you all know, DigitalOcean has been doing this for the last dozen years or more. At Dio, we pride ourselves on these three simple things making the complex simple, making the simple accessible, and doing all this on the shoulders of the best developer community in the world. This is what made DigitalOcean the company it is today, and we are very committed to doing it all over again over the next dozen years to help all of you navigate through the opportunities that we just talked about. Let's start by looking at what our customers have to say about us. My name is Jacob Jackson. Uh, I'm the CEO and founder of Supermaven. 
We offer a coding copilot that's much faster and can understand a lot more context from your company's code than the other copilots available today. So my name is uh, Sieb. I'm the founder of Playflow Cloud. Game studios and game developers use my platform to host their game servers. Uh, my name is Lucas. I'm CEO of Gleep. Gleep is an in-app bug reporting and customer feedback tool for apps and websites. I'm Dana. I'm director of operations and co-founder of Web X-Ray. So my name is Tim. Uh, with Dana, I'm co-founder of Web X-Ray. We're offering a privacy search engine to help accelerate the transition to a privacy online environment. Hi, I'm Zach. I'm a machine learning engineer at uh, Gnomic. Atlas is a visualization software that allows uh, technical and non-technical people to interact with uh, AI scale data sets. I'm Niels Schut. Uh, I'm CEO and founder of uh, Sportunity. I'm Bram. I uh, work at Sportunity. We service yearly 3 million athletes uh, for 600 events a year so that people can track, can have live rankings. And really important in that is that it is live because live tracking without live data is not live. <laughs> uh, so it must be really fast. So DigitalOcean is a, is a well-known name and we were looking for a provider that offered H100s uh, to train the next generation of our AI coding models. Uh, we do have a lot of traffic on our servers, uh, which means it will cost a lot uh, to run that and with DigitalOcean that's really cheap compared to other providers. So we have uh, a few nodes where we can train larger models than we previously could have. Support has been really, really awesome. It's been a lot faster and a lot more responsive than, than we've had experience with some other providers. In the ML space things move really quickly so, you know, half a day or a day may, means, means the world. I think one of the main benefits of DigitalOcean is the costs are quite transparent. With uh, the larger hosting providers, you get a lot of networking costs. With DigitalOcean, I can quite clearly see that I pay for the machines I use and there's no egress cost, there's no network cost. For GPUs specifically, yeah, it was, it's really important for us to get the best possible value because that's a, a significant cost for our business. These GPUs power research and development. And when we save money um, on the GPU, that lets us translate directly into putting more computing power into the model, which creates a better experience for users. We love Dio Simple because it saves us um, time. And for a small uh, company like us, time is money. Uh, we really rely on uh, things being uh, simple to manage, especially infrastructure. Uh, so that's really something DigitalOcean helps a lot uh, because it just simplified things. One of the things I really don't like about AWS is the confusion and complexity when you want to do something simple. And that was always the thing I liked about DigitalOcean is I just go in and like I click Droplet and I can do my job. Anytime I want to launch a new service, I go on DigitalOcean, I'm like, okay, is it here? Okay, I want to use this. Let me experiment on here, create it set it up, test it. It's very easy for me to do and very uh, cost-effective as well. Wow, what you just saw is what gives us the most pride. Seeing our customers succeed and playing a small part in enabling their success. Let me now switch gears and share with you some incredible innovation our teams have been busy working on over the last several months, starting with the heart and soul of our platform, the Droplets. Today, we are very proud to announce the GPU version of Droplets, which is exactly what it sounds like, the power of GPUs with the simplicity of Droplets. This is going to make GPUs and AI accessible to everyone. Let me now invite Wade Wegner back on the show to show us how to build a real world application using GPU droplets. Thanks, Patty. I'm going to go ahead and walk you through a demo of building a RAG app using DigitalOcean and a large language model from Hugging Face. Now to do this, we've got a few resources here that we're gonna take advantage of. We've got a bucket, we've got a Postgres database, and then we've got our GPU droplet. 
Now we're gonna use all of these to build this system. Let's go ahead and jump into Visual Studio Code. Now there's two Python scripts that we're gonna to use to run this. The first is prepare. Now, when we prepare, we're gonna process some documents. Now these documents are PDFs that are stored in a space. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna download them out of the space. We're gonna extract all the text. We're gonna clean it, chunk it, and then we're gonna end up using all of this. So once we've got those chunks, we're then gonna create a table. So basically create a, a table in our database. And then we're gonna actually take those chunks that we've uh, gotten from the processing earlier, and we're gonna go ahead and insert those into the database. And we're gonna end up having now then all of these chunks stored as embeddings in the database that we can use as part of the retrieval. Now in the retrieval, uh, what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna ask for an input. So like, what is your question? What do you wanna ask? And so uh, to process this, we're gonna end up uh, effectively running a query and based on the query, um, uh, based on the question that has been asked, we're gonna write a query that's gonna try to select the embeddings and the chunks of text out of the database based on how similar they are. So we're gonna do a similarity search. And then once we've received those chunks, we're gonna concatenate them all together and pass it along into the generate response where it's gonna have the context that we extracted out of our Postgres database along with the query. So let's go ahead and see this in action. We're gonna go ahead and SSH into our GPU droplet. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna set up our virtual environment. And this is basically just ensuring that everything that we need installed, all of the packages and everything are ready to go and available for us. And then we're just gonna go ahead and uh, go ahead and activate uh, this. So great, we are all set there. So let's go ahead and run our prepare. So Python prepare documents. And as I mentioned, what this is doing is it's iterating through all of our PDFs. We're extracting all that text using PyPDF2. We're gonna use NLTK to split that text into sentences and then group them into overlapping chunks based on our predefined chunk size and overlap. And then we're gonna leverage a sentence transformer model from Hugging Face to generate embeddings for each chunk and take all of that and store it into the database. Once this is done, we actually don't need to do this again. It's all been set up. And then we can go ahead and run our retrieval. So let's go ahead and run retrieval. And it's gonna first actually download what's needed, um, including the, um, the underlying model we're using. In this case, we're using the Flan T5 large model from Hugging Face. And with this established, it's gonna end up asking our question. So I can say, what is a droplet? And with this now, it's gonna go off and search the database. Now this database is also using PG vector um, so that it ends up uh, retrieving the best, most relevant chunks and it'll generate an answer. And so there you go, you see that answer. It's succinct, it's accurate. And Patty, in just a couple of minutes, we've been able to showcase how with the GPU droplet and some additional resources from DigitalOcean, we've been able to create a RAG. Back to you. That is great, Wade. It is awesome to see what we can do today to build powerful RAG-based applications today on DigitalOcean platform. But we know that not all developers want to make all the choices and instead want to add AI experiences quickly to their app versus managing the whole stack of AI technology. There's a lot of work that still needs to happen to turn this into an easy way to embed all this AI code into a website or a web application uh, and just do it very naturally as part of your software development. So we are constantly looking to simplify this journey. And I'm very proud to announce that we have another way of doing it if you don't want to deal with the complexity of creating your own infrastructure to, to make AI possible in your applications. For that, I'm going to invite Zach to show us a quick demo of using LLMs as a service on the DigitalOcean platform. Zach? You're exactly right. And that's why we're building a new set of generative AI capabilities. I'm thrilled to introduce you to our latest innovation, the DigitalOcean Gen AI platform, purpose-built to easily add AI agent capabilities to your applications without managing the underlying infrastructure. 
We're going to walk you through our new platform by showing you how to build a documentation chatbot. We'll be taking a foundational model and adding the context of a documentation site. This will be using the RAG technique that we reviewed in the last demo. But with the GenAI platform, we take care of it for you. Our journey begins within the GenAI landing page, where you can see what large language models are available to you. Choosing the right foundational model is crucial for your AI projects. Our model playground allows you to compare various large language models side by side. Let's explore this feature. Here, you can see key metrics for each model, such as token count, response time, and cost. The side-by-side -side comparison helps you make an informed decision about which model best suits your needs. From there, creating an AI agent is straightforward by choosing your foundational model and providing the agent instructions. Here, we've selected a Llama 3 8 billion instruct model. Next, I'll tell the agent that they will help customers in using the product and guide them around the doc site. Here we could set up agent routing so that our customer support e-commerce agent can talk to our documentation agent when our users have specific support questions. From there, we can easily integrate a knowledge base to enhance your agent's capabilities. Creating a knowledge base can easily be done from your existing data that is stored in DO spaces. Now that our agent is set up, let's test it. The agent playground allows you to evaluate your agent's performance, including its ability to utilize the knowledge base. Here, we could ask questions about our documentation site to see if it can answer correctly. This ensures your agent is ready for real-world deployments. Speaking of deployments, let's see how you can add your agent to your website. Integrating your agent is as easy as going to your settings page to get a simple code snippet that you can easily embed into your site. Copy the code snippet and paste it into your website's HTML. It's that simple. Now let's take a look at the final outcome. Here, you can see a customer website with our AI agent integrated. The chatbot experience is seamless and interactive, providing users with immediate assistance and valuable information. Here I can ask questions about the product. And I'll get a response and even link to another documentation page to read more about it. So here we have seen how to easily start using LLMs and create agents directly in DigitalOcean. We are excited to launch this platform soon. Back to you, Patty. Wow, that was very, very cool. And most importantly, super simple. This is just the first step. The technology world is transforming and DigitalOcean is transforming alongside to serve the developer community as we have always done. Anchored in simplicity, focused on making the cloud technology accessible to everyone and powered by our ever-growing community of developers. There's a lot of innovation to make it easy for developers to develop and operate on the DigitalOcean platform. Just look at this incredible list of innovation we are itching to share with you today. We have a lot of exciting sessions coming up at Deploy today, kicking off with our new Chief Product and Technology Officer, Bratan Saha, who will walk you through some of the upcoming product releases and explain to you how we are going to enable your journey over the next several years. Thank you for joining us today and enjoy Deploy 2024.